knock everyone welcome back to my channel thank you for using this uh, videos as part of your learning um, this is for year 12 poetry and uh, we are going to be discussing under the theme progress the first or one of the poems uh, reality by Konai Helitaman now if you are just uh, viewing this video for the first time or this is the first time that you've come on my page I welcome you I thank you once again for um, choosing this video as part of your learning tool and for those who have been my loyal subscribers who have been um, notified that I had a new video up I thank you once again for choosing this as um, to complement your studies now <clears throat> remember under your in themes in also in uh, literature your short stories you have to choose two texts with one theme so this theme is progress and one of the poems is reality. So without further ado, we're going to go over the poem very briefly and then um, we'll discuss the notes. All right. So from just looking at the poem, it is one stanza. One stanza. These jargons that I'm using, stanza, poet, you should be familiar with what I'm uh, saying because you are in year 12. So for those of you who have um, forgotten one stanza meaning in to put it more where you can understand it's just one paragraph right we call it stanza in poetry okay so let's begin eh? i'm a big boy now i have left school but i'm a fool still a poor fool with books and blackboards casting dark shadows on me i look for a little opening of light i hear people laughing what are you gonna do now with your education and all. There is the marketplace where the people sell their wares, women chasing flies from day old pies. I cannot do that. I have a certificate. I passed with honors, English, maths, history and geography. I learned them all. The laughter gets louder. I see my teacher sitting on a sterile rock near the beach selling green coconuts. What do I do now? An old man close by whispers, come fishing with me today, for you have a lot to learn yet. Okay, that's our poem. Reality by Konai Helen Damon. Now, when we look at the notes, and then you'll see the different styles or the different techniques that our poet had used. So our poet is, um, originally from Tonga and she also uh, she stays in Fiji I don't know at the moment when this video has been made but this um, she resides in Fiji she has uh, her children who also attended uh, schools in Fiji and uh, her um, husband was a lecturer at uh, USB I was fortunate enough to be taught by both Mr. and Mrs. Thayman at the uh, University of the South Pacific so um, this poem is really, really relevant to us today. It is a potent poem. And whenever I teach this, I usually uh, um, discuss with the students, this is reality, as the title states. This is what is happening in our modern society. We, um, we are fed this dream that if we get a good education, everything will just fall into our laps a white collar job, uh, things that we've wanted or concerned with what we have studied in uh, university or in our different institutions that we have attended. However, it's not uh, the dream come true for many, many students who go through the education system. So this is what that poem talks about and how we should always uh, never look down on those who have blue collar jobs, those who are farmers, those who are sell at the market, all right, those who um, are fishermen, we should always see them as another means of survival, and they are also making as much or even more than some in white collar jobs. So let's uh, discuss the poem. All right, I'm a big boy now. I have left school, so we can assume that he he's uh, left the university, he's left high school. However, the usage of the word big boy, you can see some type of immaturity there, but I'm a fool still, a poor fool. Now, there's a repetition of the word fool okay someone who is foolish we can only assume that he is not educated so he has left school but he calls himself the persona 
him or her, the persona is saying that he's, he, they are a fool with books and blackboards casting dark shadows on me. Now, this is contradictory to what we are learning in school. We say that um, education is the light towards the path that we are trying to get to. But this poem contradicts that. Okay, it's the opposite of what we've been learning. So books and blackboards, these books, these blackboards that we see in some of our classrooms, they're casting dark shadows on me. So they're looming over the persona saying that, I, I don't understand why is it uh, trying to, um, trying to stop me from reaching my potential. But I look for a little opening of light. So he's trying to, he or she is trying to get away from this, the, the, the looming darkness of the blackboard in um, books. I hear people laughing with, what are you going to do now with your education? So that is what is society is trying to tell us. We are going, we are being um, fed the dream, like I said earlier, that we need to attend universities. And then once we graduate, the jobs will come. But some people, they think otherwise. You know, what are you going to do now with your education and all? And what is that with a question? All right. If you said rhetorical question, yeah, that's correct. Now, rhetorical questions, they are questions that don't require an answer. Usually these questions are said during speeches or if you've, uh, from uh, your previous year in year 11, you learned about that. It's a, it's a feature for, um, for rhetorical questions for language of advertisement. So this is such where it's asking you, the reader, for you to think. Okay, what are you going to do now with your education and all? There's the marketplace where the people sell their wares. So these are people who are at the market. They're selling their produce and they're women chasing flies from day old pies. Now, I cannot do that. I have a certificate. I passed with honors. Now, there's some arrogance in the way the poet is saying I. Now, he said, I cannot do that. So he or she cannot go and sell pies or sell um, anything that they need to go and sit all day while they have been um, certified with honors. English, maths, mathematics, uh, history, and geography. Now, he or she learned them all. Now, the laughter gets louder. So society is mocking this person. Where is your job? Where is this supposed uh, high roller lifestyle that you're supposed to have since you've graduated? Now, he or she sees his teacher sitting on a sterile rock. Now, I usually tell my kids, look at that. Now, rock, obviously, it's inanimate. It's a dead thing. Then you have sterile. If you look up the meaning of the word sterile, sterile meaning cannot reproduce. Teachers are meant to reproduce results in you. So when you come into the classroom, things that you never knew, we try and help you with learning so you can go out in society and be productive members of society. However, the poet or the sorry, the persona sees his or her teacher sitting on a sterile rock. Right? So that's like a double negative. That's like a double whammy saying that you are useless, how you had taught me or the things that you did teach me. It's, it's all for naught. It doesn't apply to real life situations. Now, near the beach selling green coconuts. Now, that is also a symbol of the teachers or the formal education system. Green coconuts. Now, green coconuts in my native tongue, it's called boo. Now, these are the, um, not yet matured coconuts. So we usually, the, the, the flesh is very soft. The, the, the juice is very uh, sweet to drink. Okay, so it's not yet matured, meaning it's not yet reached its full potential. So not only is the teacher sitting on a sterile rock, something that is dead, cannot reproduce, but it is selling something that is not yet reached its maturity. Right. So then he further questions, what do I do now? So he's having this epiphany or this moment where he's thinking about what's the purpose? You know, if my teacher is selling coconuts, what does that say about me? Then an old man close by whispers, come fishing with me today, for you have a lot to learn yet. Okay, that's that's very um, a, a beautiful ending to a poem that is well said. Now, an old man close by whispers. So the old man can be a symbol of our tradition, our old ways, our elders who are more wiser because they've lived these years. And then he whispers. You know, some things are 
you don't need to make a lot of noise to make a statement or you don't need to make a lot of noise to make a point so whispering is where amazing things happen or amazing things are said so come fishing with me today fishing why fishing right you must be asking why fishing why can't they say come let's go planting or uh, sorry no no we would have said uh, come let's go look for work or let's go to the government house to go and uh, search for work no he said come fishing so fishing once again can be a symbol of traditional methods of uh, of um, earning money of able to sustaining oneself so fishing with me today for you have a lot to learn yet right so that is a very beautiful ending to an amazing poem written by uh, an amazing poet, Konai Helu Temen. So she's saying uh, that in our society, irrespective of what you've learned in the classroom, don't forget whence you came from. And you need to know a second skill uh, of um, learning, especially when it talks about uh, reviving your culture, uh, reviving your, your tradition. So fishing is a traditional method that many of us uh, take for granted and we need to learn more than what we are taught in schools All right so that is just a brief uh, discussion on our poem I'm sure your teacher have thoroughly discussed with you has underlined some po points that I have not um, have not pointed out so please um, that the, once again this is just uh, something that you can use as a as a complementary tool to your learning so that is the discussion of our poem right now we'll move on to our notes notes discussion What's this poem about now this poem is about a boy who upon leaving school with his academic qualification cannot find a job in the workforce he is frustrated disheartened and perhaps even alienated as all his education has come to nothing disheartened alienated now these words meaning he feels alone he feels like uh, well, what he was supposed to be in good spirits about having to finish his education it's not what he has expected so that's why he feels disheartened alienated meaning he feels alone he feels alone in this journey that he's supposed to start this new life having a good job but it's not what is really happening in society his dreams of possibly a white collar job are shattered as he cannot find employment he does not see himself selling wares in the market quoting i cannot do that education has isolated him from doing simple and humble things in life so what that means education what you're learning in school formal education what you learn you later learn in uni it really gives you a narrow-minded thinking of a certain subject or a certain skill not about what you are capable of doing uh, another skill set so usually skilled work like uh, farming like fishing weaving all these things can also be a means to survive and earn money but when you go through formal education that's not really taken as a priority during his time of confusion he meets an old man which was as I had discussed a symbol for our traditional knowledge or traditional ways or the older generation who are more mature more wiser who invites him to come fishing with me today for you have a lot to learn yet okay moving on we have subjects and personas they are likened to characterization in our prose so uh, in um, poetry we do not really focus on the character or the character isn't given names they're given personas of I so our persona is I who has recently left school he did quite well in school quoting I passed with honors he feels frustrated disheartened but I'm a fool still a poor f he's got self-pity eh? he's got self-pity thinking about himself and how useless of him being in school he's disappointed disappointed sorry and disheartened as he cannot earn a living with all the knowledge he has gained in school with books and blackboards casting dark, dark shadows he's too ashamed to sell in the market so he's a lot of pride eh? so it's, he sees it as beneath him with people, formal education also creates that mentality that you are better than other people who did not attend uh, who did not attend school or who did not go as further 
to tertiary institutions as you had. Now that is not what we try to instill in you, or I try not to instill in you. But you should always remember that from humble beginnings, it sparks great leaders, sparks people who are motivators. You'll never see someone who brags a lot become someone who is um, well known in society. He or she is very humble from their beginning and will always look at people who help him or her along the way. He fears society's criticism and condemnation as he is unemployed. Sometimes when you are at school, people expect as soon as you graduate to get work. So while you're at home or if you're still at home after you've graduated, they question why you are still at home and why you're still unemployed. You will feel a lot of pressure from society concerning this. Eh? Now he feels that what the teacher taught him in school was useless. There are rock, as we had discussed from the poem, is disillusioned by formal education. So once again, the dream that was fed to him from when he was in uni, from when he was in high school, it's shattered when he is faced with a pill of reality and uh, he cannot help but to realize all his, um, his ambition, his dreams are coming to nothing. He doesn't know what to do as he cannot find a job. So the next uh, subject in our poem is the old man. He's representative of one who is knowledgeable in formal education or even traditional skills like fishing, sorry, planting and weaving. He offers the persona a way out of the dark shadow, so out of his depression, out of his uh, self-mellowing, eh? his self-defeat, he's offering him a bridge or he is offering him a, a, um, a means to survive and that is learning through traditional skills. He has a lot of knowledge to impart to the persona about how to survive in life. So once again, you can be intelligent, you can be book smart, but if you aren't really um, a, a learning in a holistic way, meaning learning beyond the books, in some instances you will uh, face the consequences or you'll feel the brunt of what society has to offer you. Okay, moving on, we'll move on to um, the themes. Okay, our first theme is rising in unemployment. Now this poem, as its title suggests, depicts a frightening reality of many school leavers, be they graduates or otherwise. Now some, once they graduate, they become, uh, they quickly um, adapt. So if they don't get a job, they quickly adapt and they either pick up a skill that they can earn money from. So they can pick up uh, wood carving, they can pick up painting, they can pick up baking, eh? they can adapt to what is in demand in society. However, some, unfortunately, they go to the, the other route, which is crime, which is uh, they resort to, to um, things that will eventually land them in prison. So as the title suggests, this is the reality of school leavers, whether you be a graduate or you are just a school leaver or a school dropout. Now the education one receives in school does not guarantee a person with a job because of rising unemployment. Further, it may add stress, confusion, disappointment and frustration to many young people who have struggled for many years in school and this may lead to disillusionment of the education system. It is a timely reminder to government to, sorry, to create job opportunities for young people. So. We have so many instances where the government are trying to promote vocational studies, where they're trying to promote, um, where those who are unemployed are sent overseas to work at um, as seasonal workers. We have seasonal jobs. We have people, uh, the government also who is uh, conducting workshops and uh, short courses for people to try and look for skill-based learning um, work that they can uh, harness their skills or their God-given talent and they can make money just as better as those with white collar jobs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Next theme we have is dignity in work. <clears throat> it seems a general perception amongst edu educated people that some occupations are beneath them like selling in the market, becoming a fisherman, etc. This perception or this idea needs to be changed. Young people need to realize that there is dignity in employment, regardless if one is a farmer or a lawyer. 
The fact that one make an honest living out of what they do is all that matters. That is so true, right? If you are earning a honest wages, you are not stealing or you are not earning money through me, uh, illegal uh, ways, then that's a job that is providing for your family, then that's all right. Okay, you do not need to bring down another person because you seem or you deem your work better than others. In fact, today, it seems that many blue-collar workers like tradesmen and farmers make more money and find more enjoyment in what they do when compared to white-collar employees like clerks or even... Basically, that means in nowadays there's a lot of farmers like um, Yangona farmers, ginger farmers, you know, those people who are in the farming industry or agricultural industry, they, uh, they earn as much or even more than those who work in the offices and those who are even teachers. So never think that a white collar job is better than a blue collar job. Never think that. You will be humbled, trust me, you will be humbled when given that situation. Next theme is encourage vocational or informal education. A serious consideration needs to be put into vocational or informal education whereby one can learn a trade or skill that will not only make th that will not only make them marketable in life so you can also be knowledgeable in books meaning you can reach up to tertiary education you can get a masters you can get a phd you should also learn a skill they can also be your fallback your plan b or you can learn something that can uh, not only make you a, a passive income or something that can also be because right now the jobs that are available are not always stable or not or not always um what shall i say or not always um guaranteed all right so during this time it's uh the the making of this video it's 2022 so we learned here in fiji that work is not always guaranteed or work is not always um, given to us when we expect so we had a lot of uh, people losing their work we had a lot of people unemployed due to the pandemic so sometimes you need to learn a vocational or, or something that can help you a skill that can help you earn money All right so that is what this uh, what that means eh? but also teach them how Sorry. But also teach them how to survive when there is no employment, for instance, how they could make use of traditional skills in order to survive. So that is just what like I was, um, <clears throat> excuse me, like I was uh, sharing before. So you need to find a <clears throat> another skill that can help you with uh, your your basic survive, survival. All right, so government needs to ensure that children receive a balanced formal and informal education that effectively prepares them from the outside world. For example, not everyone can be lawyers or teachers. For students who are not interested in white collar employment, perhaps they need to be encouraged to find a trade or skill from which they can make themselves marketable. All schools may need to provide vocational education for students who fall in this category. Should look into you. Okay, now. Sometimes we need to also take accountability of our skills or our range when it comes to learning. So if we think we cannot go beyond year 12 or we cannot go beyond year 13, there is no shame in learning vocational studies or learning a skill that will help you earn more or a lot of money. So the the not only the government should look into this, but our parents, our stakeholders, teachers and also you as an individual you should really examine and reflect on yourself and say okay for me i need to uh, you've gone through all through the system and you feel that education is not what your cup of tea then i advise you to always think outside the box and that is to um try a vocational education okay now we'll look at the styles style eh? so we'll look at style of the poem Okay, the first one is the clever use of language. The simple words a diction are used to depict a common situation that of being unemployed after graduation. It is something many people can relate, particularly today, with rising unemployment as more and more people are graduating and even more are being laid off. 
So they use very clever, not they, sorry. Um, Can use very clever use and simple. Right? It's very simple. It's to the point. You understand what the poem is about through the simple word that is being used. Next one is the use of contrasts or an ironic situation. Thayman is portraying a situation of a graduate who passed with honors, end quote, in all his subjects. He is supposed to be smart, and yet he is a fool still, a poor fool, because in spite of all his academic achievements, he cannot survive in the real world. Next one is the imagery. Thayman uses Thayman's use of languages of disappointment, disillusion, and confusion. The mood and atmosphere of the poem comes out clearly with like quote with books and blackboards casting dark shadows on me or quote i see my teacher sitting on a sterile rock end quote it seems that those that have gone to learning institutions have returned home with hopelessness and nothingness so that it uh, once you've read the poem you then it gives you this um realization that uh, this is the reality it also gives you this kind of um of this dark foreboding future that you are supposed to expect and that's the beauty of uh, literature that's the beauty of learning for English not only are we trying to teach you the skills of communication but also about society's uh, uh, problems and society's standards okay next one is imagery sorry next one is repetition a Thayman uses repetition to convey a point fool quote is repeated twice to convey an important message. That is, if education is only academic, then one remains a poor. Don't be naive to think that you will learn and should only uh, monop um, monopolize just learning in the classroom or just focus on learning in the classroom. These times that we are going through, you have to be versatile. You have to be diverse in your learning. So not not only learn in the classroom, you should learn at home. Maybe your aunties or your parents or your grandparents can teach you a skill that can help you earn money uh, on the side or while you are working at an office or if you are waiting for employment after you graduate. Okay, next, um, next style is the effective uh, title effective title now the title is quite apt or it's best suited although it is a grim reality for many students today so it's a sad or it's a very uh, foreboding reality eh? the poem also offers a solution that is through informal education the title and the situation it represents al it represents allowing readers to reassess their priorities in school and help students to make rational decisions that has allowed them to glimpse at what reality is all about so this is going to happen to you. You will know that once you are graduated, you have to look for work. And if you are not hungry and thirsty for it, and if you're not top of your class, where the workforce is readily awaiting or readily opening their doors for you, you need to resort to informal education. Next style is symbolism. Now, this is used throughout the poem effectively to represent different things. Now, dark shadows, symbolic of the disappointment, the sterile rock, symbolic of all the knowledge learned in the classroom being sterile or unproduct unproductive or useless when faced with the rea realities of life. Last one is the green coconuts can mean many things to different people. For some, it may mean an in persona for reality. So those are some symbols. And there are some others that we had discussed earlier. You can say the old man, you can say the fishing, all these things that you can um, see as a symbol for many things beyond of what is written. Okay, last one is the use of questions or rhetorical questions. Eh? Now, Thayman uses questions depicting again the mood and atmosphere of the poem as well. as how the person is feeling. What do I do now? End quote. Shows the person confusion being in this situation as he has succeeded academically. It is also used to depict how society or parents expect their children to find employment after their education. What are you going to do now? with your education and all. End quote. They expect that since one is educated, then they should be employed. Now when that fails to happen, when that fails to happen, persona feels useless and ashamed as he has not lived up to his parents or society's expectations. 
So once again, the questions that is used, you also question your validity of your education or you question the validity of what your teachers had taught you or told you, uh, selling the dream of uh, having uh, passing with honors, you'll get work. But in reality, sorry to say for some of us, this is not the case. You will have to be humbled. You'll have to learn things that you thought was beneath you. And that is the reality of our poem. Right. So uh, with that being said, that is uh, just a brief discussion about reality written by Konai Halutaman, a Tongan native, and a very um, common name that is uh, being uh, said in most of our English classes. Eh? And when you get to year 13, you'll hear her name even more. So we thank you. Um, I thank you for... Uh, using this as a tool for your learning and your revision for your exams or for your tests or whatever you're going to use this for. I thank you for using this uh, platform. I also ask that if you can like and share this video, you subscribe, please. So you'll be notified if I upload anything. If you're in year 12, you'll also, when you reach year 13, I have, um, I have content of uh, year 13 literature registers and um, also some other places where I've had Zoom classes with my year 13 in my school. So you can also use that as your, your learning tool. So please comment down below if um, this is helping you or if it is uh, any way helping um, you learn better. You can also help me in uh, ways that I can improve. Uh, maybe my pronunciation or things that I have said that you do not understand. Or if you have a question from your past year papers or questions from your teachers that um, I could relate to this poem, please do. I allow you, I also, I accept all these comments and all these critique from others because I'm also trying to improve on my craft. So I thank you once again for everything. I hope you all, you have a blessed time wherever you are, whatever you're doing at this moment. All the best in your revision. Thank you.